services, employee benefits, bookkeeping, financial advice, and getting it all underneath one roof for a lower cost than they would by having four or five people is essentially what the model is. In three short years from the dead standstill, we've acquired 1,100 clients. So we know a little bit about marketing to just tell you at the rate that we brought in clients. We've grown the company from just me and my partner to 21 people. We just opened up our second location in Peachtree City. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we do it and, and the way we do social media. Does anybody by chance listen to the regular guys at all? Anybody willing to admit? Oh, yeah. Okay. Some people will, will, will say that they listen. Some people don't want to admit that they listen. But we have been on the radio with them for uh, two and a half years now. Every Tuesday morning, you can catch us at 8 a.m. George Stein is sort of their legal. If you get drunk, you call George Stein guy. And uh, we're their financial, uh, financial people. And I'll talk to you about how that relationship has worked out. We also are on 790 of the Zone Sports Radio. So if you ever listen to uh, for sports fans, Steak or Nick or uh, Chris in the morning, we'll be on that show usually once a, once a quarter. Um, so before I give you these handouts, because usually once I hand out, people end up reading ahead of the slide. I want you to just take out a piece of paper and I just want you to think about something because a lot of years at American Express and building this brand, whether you own a company or you work for a company, building your personal brand and the brand of the company is really important for bringing in clients. And I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about why not to ignore this X and Y generation, especially up here in North Fulton. This, this entire area up here is packed with people between the ages of 25 and 45 and I will tell you that they have money. So for those of you that are in the business, whether you sell real estate or you sell services at the house or you're selling financial services, whatever it may be, it's more money than you think. Okay? And it's very much of an ignored generation right now by, by a lot of services because of the focus on baby boomers. So there was a study that was done at uh, the Kellogg School of Management. This was many years ago. And they asked the question to this group, and I want, you to, I want you to write down what you think your answers are. A professor divided his MBA students into three groups, and he basically asked him this question. What would you pay today for a pair of 18 karat gold earrings with 0.3 karat diamond studs in there? What would you pay for that set of earrings? And 18 karat gold earrings, 0.3 diamonds, you may have no idea what the value of gold or diamonds are. Uh, but go ahead and take a guess about what you think it would cost to get that pair of earrings today. 18 karat gold? What's that? Uh, yes, yeah, so, so just take a guess. Let's just assume it's reasonable clarity. Reasonable color. You know, it's not super clear, but not super fuzzy. All right, now, once you write that down, now I want you to ask yourself, what will you pay for the same set of earrings at Tiffany's? Tiffany's. Uh, Tiffany's, you know, of course. Uh, then I want you to ask yourself what you would pay for the same set of earrings at Walmart. At Walmart. Now this was done. This was done about a decade ago. So realize we're before the gold drive here, so your prices might be higher. Um, but go ahead and just tell me what do you think it would cost for the regular regular set of earrings? Five hundred. Five hundred. Five hundred. Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Twenty-six. And how much at Tiffany's? How many had double the price at Tiffany's? No. Yeah. Anybody have tripled the price at Tiffany's? Okay. And, and how much discounted was your Walmart against the regular price? Yeah. Less than half. Less than half. Ten percent. Thirty percent. The MBA group, the first group, had $550 when they did the study. The Tiffany's price was about double, and the Walmart was about 25% of the price of the $550. A massive discount. Um, so the question is, is, does Tiffany's have better diamonds? No. Are the women saying yes? <laughs> Don't tell my wife this right now. They have the light blue box. The light blue box. They have the light blue box. That's it. Yeah. You know, so the real question here at the end of the day is that, some of you may already get this in your business. One of the things that we realize is that brand perception in your business is incredibly critical because it's not reality that matters. It's the perception of that reality. So are Tiffany's Diamonds better or Walmart's or K Jewelers? I, I don't know. I mean, we could argue yes or no all day, but beauty is in the eye of the beholder. This is true when you look at the coffee industry and things like Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or getting your coffee at Quick Trip. You know, the reality is that you're going to make a decision. So one of the things to know in the marketplace is that a lot of people are just focused on trying to pitch a service without really thinking about the perception of what their brand looks like. So 
when we went into this, one of the things that we realized in building the business, this is one of the things I really didn't enjoy about working for American Express and I enjoy about owning my own company, is that many years ago, I'll, I'll talk to you about your business. Um, who's in real estate here? Okay. So you got 10 people in real estate. 20 years ago, 15 years ago, what did the real estate industry look like? You would go out and hire an agent. An agent would take you around to you know, 10, 20, 50 homes, whatever it may be. You visit them all. You take a look inside, outside. Eventually, someone would make a decision. Today, what does the consumer do? Look online. online. First thing they do is go online, whether it's on Realtor.com or Zillow or one of those places. They check out 100 homes to narrow it down to five. Then they may decide to call an agent. Right? And that may be you or somebody else in town. And once they call that agent, they've already narrowed it down and pre-decided on the homes and potentially pre-decided on you, the agent, based upon what? Perception. What makes that decision? Perception. Perception. Okay? So the first thing in here that I will talk to you about is that if you go into your business is that you have got to make yourself Googleable. Now, I'm, I'm not, I don't know if that's a word. I don't know if it's in the dictionary now. But it's my word that I use with people in our company because if you are not Googleable, you are irrelevant. Why? I'm going to tell you that a marketer's delight is, is in general, is when people are ignorant and, for lack of a better word, sometimes are stupid. And what the internet has done to people is it's dumbed them down. Because here's what people do, especially in the X and Y generation. I won't say so much for baby boomers, but they want to figure something out. The first thing they do is they go into Google, and what do they put in? A handful of words. Give me the top ten things I need to know about real estate, or the, the top five real estate agents in Alpharetta. Atlanta <laughs> homes for sale. Right? <laughs> and when they first do that, there's going to be a number of things that come up where they may have met you at a function like this. The first thing they're going to do is go back and do what? Google. Check you out online. They're going to Google you, okay? Everyone says they're not a stalker. Everyone's a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they'll Google you. They'll Facebook you. They'll check you out and they'll find out whatever they can say, especially in the X and Y generation because they are super pessimistic, okay? They believe that most of you, including people in our business, are crooks, that we're not in it for a legitimate profession, that, you know, there must be some other angle. So you have to beat down that transparency. And when they Google you, the question is, what do they find out? What do they find out? Do they just see your LinkedIn profile? Is that it? Do they see your LinkedIn and Facebook profiles? And, and how many pages can they Google you for? Okay? Ask yourself that when you go back today. My idea initially when I started the company is that I wanted to be 20 pages deep in Google. I wanted you to hit every single Google page and pull me up every single time with an important note. And this is the note that I'm going to tell you. I don't pay for search. I'm going to tell you that today. I don't pay Google. I don't pay companies for search. You can do it without paying them for search. I've done it. Okay? This is important to know because years ago, the way people made buying decisions, that people lived in a community. Most, most of you grew up somewhere. I grew up in New Jersey. In New Jersey, we had these, these uh, uh, subdivisions, much like we have today. But families knew each other. People lived there for a long time. My parents knew all the owners in town. Parents knew other parents. People played sports together. You kind of knew each other. Being that colleges and jobs have created higher mobility, most families are fragmented today. You know, Atlanta's a great place, and most people from Atlanta aren't from Atlanta. You, know, you get 10, 20% native and 80% not. And so the reality is that if you're in a subdivision today, you might know a couple of neighbors, you don't know them all, especially now with, you know, homes going in and out and people move, you don't know them all. So referrals and the way business moves is different today. The community is realigning itself, but it realigns itself on the internet. That's where everything will realign itself. People will still want communities, but it will ultimately align itself on the internet. And so what people want on the internet is content. Does anybody know what I mean when I say content? Content is key because the question is, what makes you the expert? Okay? If I was in the income tax business full time, and somebody wanted to search an article, we're at year end, and they said, I want to know the five ways to lower my taxes for 2011, would your article come up first? Would you be the one that they would hit first? So it's really important today to understand that to get yourself Googleable, beyond being on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and all that other junk, you start to got to start to create content, and that's important. Now I'm going to give you a couple of tips around this. How many of you use Harrow? Anyone know what Harrow is? Okay, there's a website called Help a Reporter Out. H A R O Harrow. What Harrow is is that journalists today don't work for newspapers anymore. They're almost all freelancers. So it used to be people who worked with it for major newspapers. They don't today. They freelance and they shuffle articles. Consequently, Harrow was developed. It's a free service, by the way. 
where reporters every day are looking for somebody to quote. Let me say that again. Reporters every day are looking for somebody to quote. The articles range. They range from business and finance to health care to technology. I mean, and they could be related to your business or not. But I'm going to tell you that having been quoted in over 20 major publications, including the Wall Street Journal, for free, that they are out there. But you've got to be on it. And I'll pop you an email every day. You can look at the articles. And if it's on there, you just respond. You just respond. So I've been able to get into AOL, Yahoo Finance, Smart Money Magazine, Good Housekeeping. I, I write pretty regularly for the AJC Bargain Blog right now. I'll be in there once a month. I haven't paid a nickel for it. Okay? Reporters need to get quote sources. So you might work hard to try and build a relationship with a local reporter. The problem is it's not local anymore. They're not, they're not around anymore. Now, the second site that's like that is something called PR Leads. Has anyone heard of PR Leads? Same thing. PRLeads.com is another service like Harrow that provides you the ability to get quoted. And that's really important because what happens in Google when you get quoted? Your link. Your link, right? So when Ted Jenkins gets quoted, here's what people see. All right? I'm 42 years old. An average 40-year-old that's out there is looking to buy the service. They click on a Google. They click Ted Jenkins, Oxygen Financial. They go down, and what do they see? Ted Jenkins discusses with the Wall Street Journal. Ted Jenkins discusses in Yahoo. Do they read the article? No. No, they do not, because people that are 35 don't read. Okay? Believe me, we have heavy, heavy data. They don't. You know what they do? They scan. Right? They're like, oh, let me read the one line underneath the big blue line, and if it kind of makes sense to me, you're good. Now, right, does that make sense? You know, in buying decisions, as you know, do not make rational sense. They just don't. People are predictably irrational. That's the way that it works. Gen X and Gen Y especially don't have the time to read all this stuff. So what they do is they scan. And if I'm in five articles on that front page of Google and they click me, guess what they say? You're credible. He's good. I just got street cred, as they call it, like that. Okay? It's that simple. And they go, I want to use that person. Why? Well, they're all over the place. Am I or am I not? It's irrelevant. Remember I started this thing, that perception is reality. Especially when you look at your 20s, 30s, and 40s. Okay? Very strapped on time. Now, if you, if you don't want to hire a full-blown PR firm, and when we started on a really tight budget, we didn't want to do that, there's a website called PR Buzz. How many of you send out press releases on the things that you do? Okay? If you don't, PR Buzz is really cheap. It's $299 a year. That's not a big investment, right? And what they do is that you can write as many articles as you want, you tell them where you want it, and they'll fragment it out to about a thousand different publications. So, uh, Dagmar is talking about her son, Chris. Chris specializes in the dental business. He's an expert in financial services with dentists. And we created a brand for him called Atmos Dental Advisors. It was a financial atmosphere for dentists. And what we did is we ran the PR, and Forbes picked it up online. So Chris says to one of his persons that he's prospecting, he goes, hey, Forbes just had a big article on us. They click Forbes and Atmos, and guess what? It's a huge PR release. Okay? People don't understand that it's just picked up on a wire. They just read it and they see Forbes at the top and they think, man, I don't know how you got in Forbes. They didn't really get in Forbes. We just got picked up. But especially for this younger generation, they don't read. So you have to realize that if you think you're going to create some big brochure, trifold brochure, you're going to have this material and have this website with all this information, man, you're going to read it. You're wasting your time. Okay? Everything's got to be point and click, video, content like that, but you must, you must be Googleable when this is all said and done. Now, how many of you write a blog? Anybody write a blog? Okay. Mm -hmm. Blogs take time, but I have a, a top 100 ranked financial blog now called Your Smart Money Moves. I write a blog three times a week. I don't pitch my services at all. You need to make it independent from your website. So if your website is Dagmar Sells and that's where the real estate is, she may have some blog that's called Best Real Estate Ideas. And the blog itself is independent from the main website. However, it will have backlinks to it. The one thing to know in here is that your blog, if you title your name in every article, it will pick the content up on the internet. So you're all experts at whatever you do, whatever business you're in. It's the cheapest way to start a blog is to go into Google or one of those type of websites and just start a Google blog, which is simple. I would invest the money to spend $500 or $1,000 and get yourself a, a professionally made blog site. And then just have a back person that is really cheap, just post up your articles. You write the content, they post it up. 
I posted articles this week, for example, on how to keep your daughter's birthday party under five hundred dollars because there's a lot of Gen Xers that want to spend like fifteen hundred bucks for the kid's birthday party. They're crazy. Uh, I talked about layaway plans, how they're coming back. Uh, you don't know if Walmart opens up. Right? I'll talk about things like Black Friday and not to get scammed. So even though I'm in the financial services business, if you can still provide advice around what people are searching for. In your business, the easiest thing to do is to ask yourself while you're home at night, if I was to search for me, what would be the keyword that I would put in Google? Okay, we were talking about the pest control services, you know, and I search, you know, get rid of termites. And when that comes up, what are the top articles that come up? And you're going to want to write an article in that space so you remain at the top of Google. Okay? Google wants that content. Once you write the blog, guess what? Google doubles up your value by having a video attached to it. So once you do a blog, it's not very expensive today. Look, we're, we're videotaping this thing, right? You know, it's not that expensive to basically get a nice camera or get one of those eye flips and video yourself. They don't have to be like these high-def professional videos. Video content is key because your lower 20s, people in their early 20s and their late teens that are moving now, their number one search engine is no longer Google, it's YouTube. So just so you know, I have a daughter who's 14, I Google's like, it's way secondary to YouTube. Okay, so you're going to need video content over time if you want those young 20s buyers. It isn't just going to work off of, off of surface content on the internet, it won't, it won't work that way. So one thing just to know in here is that I, I leave you the, the first theme in here is that you've got to you've got to stay you've got to stay Googleable. Okay, how many of you have ever heard of something in town called Atlanta Business Radio X? How many of you have heard of that? This is just an example. Um, we did a, we've done a program on them for a while, but you can do it in your office. One really easy thing to do is create your own internet radio show. Now I'm going to tell you about the regular radio in a minute. But internet radio show is very, very easy to do. The goal of an internet radio show is not to get listeners, okay? Your goal isn't, let me have 10,000 people, I promise you, 10,000 people aren't going to sit at their desk and listen to your internet radio show. Your goal is to get leads. So in our business, as opposed to doing a financial show, we created a show called The 40-Year-Old Business Virgin, and we had a show where we invited business owners to get interviewed about the process of owning and running a business, like how do you grow top line revenue, how do you increase e EBITDA, how do you retain employees, how do you increase sales, and by bringing those owners in and interviewing them and giving them a YouTube clip that they could use on their website and that content, we were able to pick up significant leads of quality people that we wanted to meet. So you ever have a hard time getting in touch with a business owner because they're really busy? Look, what they get all excited about is getting interviewed and being on a radio show. When they're in a studio in some nondescript building, they don't know the difference. I think one of their studios are in Rome up on like Windward Parkway now. You wouldn't, they don't know the difference. Most owners are like, am I on the radio? Yeah, there's three people listening. Uh, you know, they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't know. They're just so excited to be there to talk about their stuff that they're going to feel ingratiated you, right? So it's a lot different deal than terrestrial radio. Terrestrial radio is a lot harder to get on. You're going to need to spend some advertising money. And then you got to try and build a relationship with one of the personalities that are on there. I'm not as big a fan of doing an AM radio show that you would buy, like on a 640 or something like that. Uh, we chose FM with the regular guys specifically because of their demographics. They are they are both male and female. Oddly enough, a lot more female than you think. It's more like 60-40. It's not like 90-10 male. Like a lot of people think it's all male, but it's totally a 25 to 50 demographic. Your average person in there is somewhere between 30 to 45. They, they actually are serious about politics and financial stuff, but they also like to laugh in the morning and hear some hijinks. That's the kind of listener that you have. I wouldn't put myself on Neil Board Show. It's just not where I would want, I would want you know, you might. I mean, I, I just not where I would want to be. And I did a Saturday show for a year. It's, it's a tough gig to produce unless you really want to create content. And it seemed for the X and Y generation to be much more advertorial than you being in a segment in a show. Okay, so one of the things to know in the radio business today is do you think it's tough for those guys to get advertising money in now? Do you think TV is mm -hmm. tough? Oh, you yeah. bet it yeah. is. Radio sales is very difficult right now. And so one thing to know is that you can call your shots for not as big a price as you would think to grow your business. You can go in and negotiate stuff for a really cheap price because I heard, I don't know how many of you follow the radio stocks, but none of them are doing well. They're all in atrocious shape right now. And even Cumulus, which is big, which is acquired Citadel, they may own a thousand stations now. They'll play ball. They, they, need, they need to be able to get the money. So 
I would try an internet radio show would be would be a would be one way to basically grow your business. Now, how many of you have a website? How many think your website is good? Okay. <laughs> let me let me let me give you a website so you can start to get an objective point of view. There is a website out there that basically tra tracks the traffic of websites. It says what website is number one in the world and what website is 10 million. That website is called Alexa. A L E X A. Alexa is a ranking website. It basically ranks websites from one to a gazillion based upon traffic. So there are a lot of people in my business who are like, yeah, our company's website is awesome. And I go, really? Then why are you 7 million? They're like, what are you talking about? You know? I, I know what I'm talking about because it's the, it's the ranking site on the internet. And when you get sold stuff from advertisers or people that want you to buy banner ads, go back and look at the Alexa ranking and that will tell you how you can pay in price. Because what, what salespeople will do is tell you, we get a ton of impressions, we get all these people looking at our website, and then you're like, yeah, it kind of, you don't. And then once you call them out, you'll find out if you buy stuff, they don't know what they're talking about. Okay? On your side, you've got to look at that Alexa ranking. That's really critical. Our Alexa ranking of our website is 300,000 now. Just to give you a perspective, that's pretty darn good for, you know, we're not like Perez Hill which, by the way, is in the top 50 in the world, just to give you perspective. Number one website in the world is Google, number two, Facebook, number three, YouTube. Okay, But there are a lot of websites that are out there that don't really get traffic. So one way to, to buy some traffic to your website is to buy small, tiny ads on the blog sites in your industry. Let me say that again. Buy small, tiny ads on blog sites. So I'm in the financial services business. It might seem to you to be backwards that I would advertise on financial services blogs, but most people that write financial services blogs are in the business of blogging. They're not in the business of financial services. So when I advertise on their site and I give away something like a free brochure on 10 ways to lower your taxes, or I give away on seven smart money moves before divorce, it drives lots of traffic back into my site for cheap money. Most of those bloggers, you can get an ad on their site for 25 bucks or 50 bucks or 100 bucks. It's not, it's not expensive money, but you drive you drive traffic. So just to know in there that, that one thing you can leverage is there's a whole bunch of people that you might think do what you do. They just discuss stuff about what you do. And then you're going to try and launch your ads on what they are. So the people that are reading that and that are interested will potentially backclick into your into your website. So I would have a blog and I would look at your, your ranking. Um, last couple things I will tell you on here. Um, most of you at this point, most people have a LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter type deal. Um, how many of you are trying to manage that from a central source? Okay. My central source, me. Two, two ways to do this. If you have a LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, and you're tired of updating, two very simple things you can do. One is a website, if you go online, called Ping FM, P I N G dot FM, which once you give your usernames and passwords, you can type in one update, and it will it'll put it to Tumblr, Dig, Facebook, LinkedIn, all at one shot. How many of you have an, have an iPhone? Okay, if you have an iPhone, you can use an app called Hootsuite. It's H-O-O-T, you'll hear more about it. It's H-O-O-T, S-U-I-T-E, Hootsuite, and Hootsuite lets you do it mobile. Okay? All right, last thing I'm going to tell you, is this will help in one way, shape, or form. It's a Hootsuite, H-O-O-T, S-U-I-T-E. Last thing I'm going to tell you in here is that how many of you believe that people can't sit at a meal without looking at their mobile phone? <laughs> yep. And that's kind of everybody now. I don't think it's esoteric to the X and Y generation. You sit out for a meal and you just watch people. It's like, you know, here are my kids, here's my mobile phone. Which one do I like better? My mobile uh -huh. phone. Uh, I'm guilty of it too. That being said, we have really started to drive our mobile marketing. Okay, And the mobile marketing that we've done that's really worked well for us is that there's a big company in town called Isaac. Um, I, I believe they're actually a multi-level marketing company. That's the way that they make their money. But they're on a text number called 90210. Mm -hmm. So you ever see somebody have that, just you know the short and the long of it, is that you can't buy a text number like you buy a domain. They're owned by the government. They're underneath something called a common short code. You can only lease them. You can't buy them. And then you have to build your own network with the cell phone company. It's very difficult. So the thing, thing I would tell you is that for a pretty cheap amount of money, this is what I did, is that I have the number 90210 just like you could, or you could have any number that you want to go negotiate with. And then I have the keywords that affect my business. So if you today leave here and you text the word oxygen to 90210, 
So in the two box in your SMS message, you put 90210. In the body, you put oxygen. It's going to send you back an introductory message to the company. And if you click the link, you'll see a high depth video on what we do. Okay. Once you're on there, I tell you this in advance, you're actually on my drip network in your mobile phone. And all that means is once a week on Friday, I actually send a drip to the mobile phone. Over 90% of my mobile phone stuff gets open. Less than half of my emails get open. And I think it's going to get worse with the spam that you're all seeing in your email. So you've got a window, I think, here of probably three to five years to mobile phone market before that gets you know, too aggressive. Because how many texts do you really get from outside salespeople versus friends right now? Not that many. That cost to build a platform like that is about 50 bucks a month. It's not expensive. It really isn't. So we run tons of campaigns that are in there. And we also have started to launch out doing QR code now. For those of you that aren't doing QR code, those are those fuzzy little boxes you see next to ads. People will have scanners. I would not take the scanner to your website. What I would do is take it to a specific offering for a specific objective, which is the way that we're doing it. Okay? And, um, you know, the best thing I can tell you in here is that this, this game is a learning game for us. I, I chose not to pay someone on the outside to do it, so I had some school of hard knocks in here. But we invest in the business. At the end of the day, if you own a company, what we're trying to build is a brand. Because at the end of the day, if you try to build your company, you're trying to grow your sales, maximize the even in the business, and potentially have a business you could sell one day. And, and that's the idea behind creating the brand. So if it works well for us, which I think it has in just three short years, we will be a, the dominant X and Y boutique firm in Atlanta, potentially outside of Atlanta, over the next 10 years. And people that say, hey, I'm 40 years old or 35 years old, I want a family office to get everything done, where do you go? Oxygen. They're not your parents' company, we're your company. And that's the difference. So th that may just help tell you a little bit about you know, how we're doing it today. I don't know if any of that will help you, but if you take any one of those things and take them back, um, this is, uh, for me, I believe, like most of you, and that's probably the reason that you're here, is that if you're an okay salesperson, you're a great lead generator, you'll make pretty good money. If you're a great salesperson, but you have no leads, it doesn't really matter. So at the end of the day, you know, we're focused a lot like you on creating a really large pipeline lead generation, and then you have to have decent salespeople that can be able to do a good job for clients, follow through on the commitment, and be able to be able to close. You know, that's that's the business. So um, I just thought I'd wrap up. I know you got food that's coming. See if I could answer you know any questions. And, and I have handouts that you can take with you. All the slides that I would have gone in the light throw, but it probably would have gone in the space. Um, you can also text me in one of two ways. You can I, I have an end card. If you text me, T E D J Ted J to nine zero two one zero. You can get my mobile card. I try not to hand out business cards when I go out now. So if people ask me a business card. I have, a, I have a business card, I tell them no, I don't. And then I ask them, do you have a mobile phone? They generally say yes. And then I ask them to text my, my Ted J to 90210 and then they can get my card. Okay, it's just a, a way for me to be able to get it. On the back side, I capture their phone number so I can follow up the conversation. Okay, I went to eight gazillion mixers in my lifetime, stacking cards on my vanity at home and stuff like that. Half I forgot to follow up with. You know, <laughs> half ended up in my drawer. I was like, I gotta call that guy. The phone is just an easier way to do it. So I have business cards. I just prefer not to hand them out. I prefer, you know, go through mobile, and that's the way we're, we're trying to drop it by. So uh, let's open up for a few questions, and I'll, I'll get out of your uh, get out of your way to the meeting. All right. Who's got some questions? One quick question. I've seen people do that with business cards. Yeah. Not business cards. Um, they text the name and you get the. Now, do you get their number? Or do you get their, you do. their name? I don't know about. It depends on what mobile platform. On the 9021 platform, the reason I'm using it is that their back software is pretty good and it tracks all the numbers that come through by day. If you if you if you have a restricted phone number, it doesn't bring the name through. If it's unrestricted, then it brings a name through. Okay. Although sometimes it's like the husband's or the wife's name, and you call and be like, "Hey, is Julie there?" Oh, no. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but okay. but you do you do get the numbers on the back platform, and then you can drip on that through your phone or through the thing every week and say, "Hey, here's a tip for you." You know, um, you know, did you sign your termite contract? <laughs> you, you can send whatever you want every week to them. You can send coupons out through there. You can run specific campaigns. And it's just a regular text message charge for them. Yes. They don't charge, I don't get charged for the, yeah, that's right. They do a text message. How would you do the text message? You type 90210, go to messages. Messages, the two is 90210. The body is whatever your campaign is. You know, we have we have five campaigns we're running now, but Oxygen's the main one to just talk about the company. 
we chose to shoot a video in there because most people just turn the smartphone sideways. BlackBerry is kind of small, um, and, but they turn it sideways and then they can, you know, see the company. Do you have very many people then that will unsubscribe after they have given that information? It's not bad right now. 10%? It's not bad. You know, I don't pound them every day. Once a week on Friday, I, it's only 140 characters, so you can only say so much. And I'll usually try to write something funny like, pay attention to the road, and here's the next Because <laughs> I know they're doing something funny on the phone. But you'll see people like, you probably had one here, like your phone buzzed, you get a text, you're like, I gotta check it now. It's like nothing important, but you know, it's, it's just what people do. It's so in front of them. I'm going to pound more of my marketing over the next several years right into the phone. More and more of it. I just kind of have a testimony. I work for a, a firm where that's what we do. We build out all the graphics and stuff for social media, but we actually run accounts for people as well. But I've had people who think that they are getting the traffic that they want, and then they start a blog, and they get it looking like their brand needs to look. I mean, oxygen's everywhere. It's pretty consistent, that brand. No matter where you go, the look is the same. The, the end message is essentially the same. But I think that's been the biggest struggle for a lot of small business owners, is keeping that look the same, but also keeping their messaging um, consistent across the different platforms for whatever their campaign must be. So, There's no, no question about it. you made a good it. point about You've got to hire somebody to do some of it. I mean, I've used a back guy to do a bunch of stuff in maybe cause. To really, to really tweet every day, you could probably type five things, but then you need someone to back tweet it during the day, unless you're really adept on your phone to get it done. But you need somebody to basically cross your social media over each other. It's, it's, it's more than a part-time job. It, it takes time. Well, I'd like to add, if I may, um, this is all great techniques. We're not getting on the table the basic way of you know collecting the business card but learning how to pull up and pull up fully because uh, that technology is just not really good. Realistically, it's good for massive reach out, but closing the gap of that personal relationship that you can establish with someone. And uh, I don't give business cards away like you do, like you said as well, but I always reach out for the business card and making sure that I follow up with the business card. Before I forget, so when it gets to a point using the cell phones, technology is catching up, and not many people have it. Not many people are open minded for that. So, you know, use that way, but at the same time, I encourage you to use the basic, which is the old fashioned way. So, yeah, one, one point to add to that is that I didn't tell you about the website is that if, you're, if your website doesn't have a way to really trap leads, then you don't really, your website's irrelevant. I spent the first year in the business thinking I had a really cool website, but it didn't do anything when people got there. And now all of my focus is once I get you there, can I convert you to a lead without me being there? So you've got to have things like a free brochure that you can follow up face to face and say, hey, you got this brochure on 100 money saving ideas, let's talk. Or you haven't got the brochure on seven things to do before you get divorced. And, you know, so it's really, it is important if your website doesn't have that stuff, nobody's going to read like the about you section. They don't, they don't care.